I'm not sure if I've mentioned this before, but in my corporate life, my past, I've had many, many bosses. I've had uh, wonderful supervisors. I've had awful supervisors. I've had uh, wonderful managers. I've had awful managers. And the one thing I can say, and I know I've said this before, is that I, I've learned from each one of them. It didn't matter where they came from. It didn't matter how they spoke to me. It didn't matter uh, uh, their background. It didn't matter their experience. It didn't matter their values or their ideals. I've learned from each one of them. Good morning, everybody. My name is Ed Trevers. I'm an Anglican priest in the Diocese of Nova Scotia in Prince Edward Island. I get to serve in the beautiful town of Shelburne, Nova Scotia, in the awesome parish of Christ Church Shelburne that sits on the ancestral and the unceded territory of the Mi'kmaq people. Last week, as you know, I was in Miramichi and, uh, and, and recorded my videos up there. Today, this week, I decided the weather was so nice that I wanted to show you some, some really key, beautiful aspects of, of this amazing town that I live in. Right now, I'm sitting in a park called the Secret Park uh, in front of a piece of wonderful indigenous art created by a, uh, a local man by the name of Ed Benham. Awesome artist, you should check him out. Also, as I'm sure you remember, I'm reading through the book of Jeremiah. And uh, recently I, I read the 35th chapter of Jeremiah. And in this chapter, there's this really amazing, interesting story that takes place with this group of people that very few people I think have ever heard of. They're called the Rechabites. Now the Rechabites were a nomadic people. They, they herded animals, they sustained themselves, they, they got their food from, from gathering uh, uh, while they were journeying. They planted no crops, they planted no vineyards, they owned no houses or, or barns or, or ranches or anything else. The reason they lived like this was because an ancestor from generations past told them, you shall never live in a house, you shall never live in a building. You will only ever live in tents and you will be a nomad. And so for all these years, they listened. And in this particular chapter of Jeremiah, God takes these people, the Rechabites, and he brings them into, he, 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 he brings Jeremiah to talk to them. And through the course of this conversation, the Lord has the Rechabites explain why they live the way they live to Jeremiah. He brings the Rechabites in to teach his prophet a lesson. Now that lesson isn't how they live. The lesson is found in why they live that way. God's people, throughout the book of Jeremiah, God's people are disobedient. And he keeps telling them, he keeps, knock it off or bad things are going to happen. Knock it off or I'm going to have to come down. Knock it off or, or the Babylonians are going to come and take care of some business. You need to start listening to me. You need to behave yourselves. You need to share. You need to be graceful and generous and, 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 and loving to one another. You need to do as you're told. God's people. Jeremiah's people, the people of Israel, the people of, uh, of, of Judah, they, they don't listen. Right? They've never, they've rarely listened. And so God brings the Rechabites in to show Jeremiah that it is possible to listen. Now, that's the lesson he offers Jeremiah. But the lesson I learned from this story was we should be able to learn from everyone, no matter where they come from, no matter what language they speak, no matter what religion they, they, they hold, no matter, no matter what faith they hold, uh, no matter their experiences, no matter their values, no matter their ideals, no matter their political affiliations, we should be willing to learn. We should be able to learn. We should seek to learn from everyone, period, full stop. Jeremiah, a man of Israel, a man who belongs 
to one of the tribes of God, a child of God, was able to listen to the Rechabites to learn, despite the fact that they didn't belong to God, despite the fact that they, they weren't considered the children of God. And yet he learned. You and I should be willing to do the same thing. In my life, one of the things that I am most grateful for is that when I was willing, I have been able to sit at the feet of my indigenous friends and learn from them. I've been able to sit at the feet of my friends of other faiths and learn from them. I've been able to sit at the feet of mathematicians and philosophers and learn from them. I've been able to sit at the feet of, of doctors and engineers and learn from them. I've been able to sit at the feet of bishops, as, at lay readers, at acolytes, and learn from them. I've been able to attend Bible studies and learn about aspects of God that I had never considered by a lay person. I have been able to sit at the feet of people in pubs, maybe not sit at the feet, but I've been able to sit on stools across from people in pubs who hold no faith, who hold no belief system in a higher power, and learn as much about God as I have in a room full of clergy. Be willing. Don't only be willing. Seek out opportunities to learn from all sorts of different people. Now it requires a, it re requires a certain amount of discernment. You can't just you can't just accept whatever is said to you as as gospel. You can't just accept whatever is said to you as as fact. But with the right discernment, with the right amount of wisdom, with the right application, you should be able to learn from absolutely every person you encounter and I pray that you're willing to do that. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you. May you know the peace of being in God's presence. And you may you feel the exhilaration of discovering more and more and more about our divine creator from all people. Amen.